because I've been living here for five years. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's more comfortable for me in English right now, as of right now. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. If I talk to my mom, like, I feel very comfortable speaking Spanish, yeah. you know? I think for me, it depends on the conversation and who I'm talking to. Okay. But definitely depends on the conversation. Yeah. And now it's getting weird because sometimes even with my brother, yeah. I would speak to him in English if we're talking about, like, production or business or, like, the company and things like that. Okay. But whenever we're just talking about us, and yeah. like, then the Spanish comes out. I definitely think that I understand you better in English than Spanish. <laughs> because your <laughs> Spanish is very different. Yeah, because you have the proper Spanish and then I have wow. the Cuban Spanish. I, I think Cuban is really cool. I just did some words, I just don't understand them, you know. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So how was the transition for you? Because you started acting full spanish shows and yeah. now you're transitioning into doing english and all yeah. that living here in la how was that transition well i was always like obsessed with the uh, american tv same for me yeah yeah so f for me actually my safe zone it was watching friends like that was my safe space even like when i when i started living by myself i used to play it every single night and for some reason like it just I don't feel lonely, you know, I feel like yeah. I'm with my family, you know? For sure. Yeah. yeah, I learned how to speak a lot of my English when I was in Cuba because I would watch friends growing up and with the Spanish subs. Okay. But then when I started practicing more and more English, I started doing it with, like, I would put like a, a notebook or something to like cover the subs. Okay. And like try to learn Wow. English by doing that. Wow. And then I started doing it with How I Met Your Mother, Big Bang Theory, like yeah. all of those shows. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely, um, I mean, it's funny. If my English teacher is watching this, watch me speak in English. Because, like, she used to be like, no, that's wrong, that's wrong. And I'm like, I think, I, I think my English is better yeah. than yours, but whatever. <laughs> so, well, yeah. friends taught you well. And yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And now you're here in Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I It was always my dream to come here, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. I always loved America. I, I mean, I love Spain, obviously, but America for me, like, I used to watch all this, like, you know, when I was a kid, obviously, like, Disney and, like, uh, like I was obsessed with, like, shows like The O.C., Smallville. I was obsessed with The O.C. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Dude, I used to go into i had this little office that i used to work out of and like i did a lot of editing and all my film production happened there and then late i would watch two or three episodes of the oc with no subtitles and i was in this little dark room and i was always obsessed with coming to america and coming to california and yeah. surfing and yeah exactly yeah LA. me too so javi it was the most surreal thing because i would leave and i had to walk to my house for about like 45 minutes because we didn't have a car or anything like that and i would be in the middle of havana walking around but in my head i'm thinking as the oc and like speaking to myself in <laughs> english it was the weirdest thing yeah and i bet for you it must be a little bit like that because like we're here in the building like you and i met in crossing and i thought you were like an american kid i know everybody thinks so until they hear me you know speaking yeah, but and then I you have speak if you have like your spanish thing but i think that's amazing because you are very uh versatile in that way that yeah. you can look like an an american person yeah you're european but then yeah. you have the language and all of that yeah so how does that translate into like what you do with the acting like how do you see things maybe different than other people yeah, well, so for me, it, 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 people, it's funny, but people do get surprised when they hear me speak in Spanish. Um, but for, in, it's specific for my career, uh, sometimes it's a little complicated because in Spain, they they think I'm American or like they, they're like, uh, yeah, like actually it's funny because like I recently I did an audition with my manager in Spain and he was like, hey, can you sound Spanish? I'm like, Dude, what? I was born there. Like, what are and you talking? You were talking in Spanish. Yeah, 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 in, in my Spanish? own like accent and everything. Um, and then like sometimes here they think I'm American, but then it's a little complicated because I have to work a lot in my accent. But mm -hmm. luckily, I've been able to like work a lot on the lines, you know, on the specific lines that they give me if I get a script for a new project or something. 
And um, and yeah, my last two movies I played American people. So mm. um, sometimes it's very frustrating because I have it right there. It's so close, but um, but yeah, I, I think I'm getting better and better. I've mm -hmm. been working a lot on that, especially for acting is essential. And um, and yeah, sometimes I even have dreams in English, which is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, how how is that for you? For me, I I used to be an actor when I was a kid. Okay. I acted a lot when I was in Cuba. Did a lot of theater, and then when I started like shooting things, I went completely into like behind the camera. Mm -hmm. And I love acting, and I'm okay at it. When I came to America, I went to film school, and I got a scholarship to go to film school, but as a director. So I didn't get to do any acting okay. because my accent was so thick. Okay. Because I came straight like from Cuba to America, mm -hmm. and then I, I went to film school. So I missed that part of being able to work my accent up to a point that I could act. And by the time that my English got really good, I, I'm so down the path of directing and I love it so much. I still would like to act and do a yeah. little bit of acting here and there, not as a main career like you. Like, I don't think I will ever become like a big movie star or anything like that. I would just, I would, this is my dream. I okay. would love to make movies and on each one of my movies, I always have like a role. Okay. That is like a small role that you're like, oh yeah, that guy. So like Tarantino kind of, Yes, right? I yeah. would love to do that. And then maybe... Like my dream, dream, dream is like I would love to go and do a couple action movies where I'm like this crazy guy that doesn't have to speak a lot and then I shoot right. people. All so right. I think that's kind of my experience with that. And now doing the podcast and I speak a lot in English, so I'm trying to get better and better and better. I used to want to get rid of my accent mm -hmm. until I start realizing that people actually love my accent especially women. So I was curious when you were talking about all of that, yeah. how does it work for you with, with girls? Do they love to hear you speak to them in Spanish now that you're here in LA? Um, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people say like, oh, you should keep your accent. It's like so sexy or whatever. Um, but I don't think I've been more successful with girls because of my accent, if I'm being honest. Like uh, if I was mm -hmm. French, maybe a little bit more. Some people like the Spanish accent, uh, but not not everybody so i um i don't know and also my like my accent doesn't sound that spanish it sounds more i don't know i don't know from somewhere else but um where but, do people think that you're from like when you meet a girl for the first time yeah. where does she thinks that you're from um never spain like that no, i think there's been in my entire life like maybe one person that has said like oh you look like you're from spain you know <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe just one i don't know they mm. think uh everything they think that i'm like from like sweden or uh like i don't know somewhere in the middle of europe you know Mm -hmm. um, or even like some people have said Brazil. I'm like, that's funny. I don't even. Same speak for me. Portuguese. Like no one. There's only one person that was able to guess. Oh yeah. And she's very special. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's Again, the I only bet. one. Yeah. She's the only one who guessed. But everyone else, like they think that I'm, I'm from Brazil or Argentina. Yeah. That's what I get a lot. Argentina. Interesting. Yeah. I which, wouldn't say Argentina. Yeah. Which I. I have friends in Argentina, like I would love to visit there and I yeah. love their accent. I think it sounds amazing. Yeah. Uh, Spain is the one accent that I don't know, it's like very tricky. Spain is it's completely different. I don't know many people that can actually do a Spanish accent, if I'm being honest. Uh, I don't know anybody, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Like, I feel like Argentinian and Spanish, they're like the complete like the accents that I don't know anybody that can replicate it. Yeah. But like properly, you know. Now here being in LA, how many different people have you been able to find? Like, how has that been for you? And I'm thinking of like, let's say there's someone watching this video and they're a young actor and their dream is to come to LA. What could you say to that young kid? On like, what would you say to young Javi about coming to LA? Um. Well, I would say like it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be rough, but you're gonna make it. You know, um, there's one thing that I didn't know as a kid that now I I know that is very positive, which is um, you, you truly are able to 
do whatever you want in life and you can achieve it you know um there are a lot of things that i would have never expected to end up getting you know a lot of projects and uh or even living here you know i i I believed in myself and this was always my goal, but did I truly say like 100% I know? No, there are always insecurities. And, uh, but one thing that I learned is that if you really work hard for something, like you, you can do it. Like you really can achieve it. And I don't think necessarily growing up in Spain, that's that was our reality. I don't know if it was the teachers or some people in my family but I think they tell you like oh go get the safe job and like you know this the, you know basically like do this that 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 and then like that's your entire life and uh, it doesn't work like that it's actually like if you want to achieve something really hard as long as you work so freaking hard like you can get it and uh, that's something that I've, I've learned in the last I don't know five ten years um, and yeah, it's it's very it's very refreshing to know mm -hmm. that that's a possibility, you know. What was something that surprised you that was like way harder than you expected it to be? Yeah, so one thing is the accent, for example. Um, I I've been through pain with it because they're always like, oh, you don't look Spanish, you don't look Latino. So like you, um, you know, like you, do, but you have an accent. So like we are kind of like, no, you need to speak, you know, with a perfect American accent. And there's a point that I can't hear it because I wasn't born here, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I know I'm very close. I keep working hard on it. But man, I'm telling you like for sure there has been tears, sweat, pain like it's hard because um you know being here everybody wants this dream and every single thing that pushes you back uh it's kind of like the others are closer and you need you need to get to the point that you want to get and these things are just frustrating but you gotta believe in yourself and uh just keep going if you work really hard i believe you can you can achieve anything and then the other thing about being in LA that I didn't know that is hard as well is the that feeling of loneliness you know um, tell me about that because like I heard you we were doing in other videos and you were talking about that how does that happen because I would think like you're a super popular guy handsome you must have any girl that you can want like well I mean, <laughs> not, not all of them definitely but um, yeah, it's being being lonely can happen even if you're surrounded by people, you know, and sometimes that's the case, you know. Um, I do get, I'm very busy every day, like I have events every day, like sometimes I have like even like three events a day. And so I find myself a lot of the times like surrounded by people, but I'm lonely, you know, I don't have those conversations where i can be my true self and like say like yeah and relax you know like i'm 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 still working you know and and you get out protect yourself your true self sometimes you know you don't know people here in in this town they they're all looking for success and mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't find the best hearts you know and people want to hurt you and some people are jealous what they don't realize is that like you guys can complement each other and you guys can can actually together achieve something great like we're we are not going against each other you know and uh that's what a lot of people don't understand so there are a lot of times that you feel lonely you know you open up and then like you feel stupid because you're like oh they're you know you said that you felt bad about this and now they can use it against you, you know? Yeah. The funny thing is that everyone is probably feeling the same way. Everyone is wanting to have actual connections and actual friendships. I 100% I understand what you say. I think part of it is the combination of the American culture as a whole. You are not open. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not supposed to be so open. Mm -hmm. And then you come here where you have like the top percent of performers who are always putting on a good show and a good yeah. face, you know, yeah. and everyone is trying to appear 10 times more successful than they really are, 10 times more 
beautiful or attractive or fit or yeah. wealthy like yeah. everyone is trying to portray something yeah i think we might have an advantage being from a different country being from a different culture you know to me it's like just being here sitting here with you like watching this beautiful sunset like i feel like a multi-gazillionaire like i yeah. feel so accomplished yeah and i'm not even like at 10 percent of where i want to go and where i know that i'm going to so like i guess the combination of like being grateful because we're not from this land and just the fact that we're here that puts us at a little bit of an advantage when you think about it yeah like, yeah we're already winning yeah so it is really sad like you said to find find yourself in a place surrounded by a lot of people that are also lonely mm -hmm. how do you think like that could change like i still think you can find love and good friendships here in this city because i have that has been my experience yeah H have you been able to find like one or two friends that that help you with that i i i think i think i have um but there's a problem about this career and is that the more known you are that the actually the more um insecure you feel about trusting people i think i um, feel you yeah i guess especially if you meet people after they know who you are because for example like when you and i saw each other mm -hmm. like i thought you were just another kid so yeah I'm yeah like, yeah hi 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 and yeah. then all of a sudden it's like we find out that we were in the same industry yeah. like we had the same desire yeah. and for me like something I, i haven't told you this but i was talking to latina about it when you and i had our first like sit down meeting I was so excited later that the whole time you were only talking about stories like this script is so good because like the character is doing this and you showed me this film that you liked that someone else made and you were like so excited about like look at the camera and look at the <laughs> like you were all into the right thing which was a cool story a cool movie like a cool camera angle <laughs> it wasn't about And I think I was even talking more about the business side as a producer because like the, in that moment it was like I wanted to like get to know you but also like I was thinking through that conversation as a professional so I'm like putting my A game to like so you can know that I know what I'm talking about basically so I was more focused on like execution and like strategy for the film and doing this and that and It was so refreshing to see that you were so excited about stories and all that. So maybe let's talk about that a little bit. Like what are the things that get you excited when you're reading a script or when you're on set, when you're watching a movie? What are the things that make you want to keep going after this? Man, uh, this is a little, this might be a little embarrassing, but um, do, do like like the, the movies that inspire me and my idols if you want to call them that were or my inspirations you know every time i get like a little caught up in like hollywood life of like you know all this glamour or anything like i play one of those movies that really told me this is what you want to do um and that's it i go back in the game of like no what is important is not it has nothing to do with being famous or being you know or like making so much money or like you know being glamorous or no like that's not the life i that's not the life i want what i want is to do something that inspires people and like every time that happens i play a movie like rebel without a cause um romeo and juliet um the the one with the buzz larman did um with dicaprio mm -hmm. um I don't know, Fight Club, uh, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, like, all these movies that, like, when I watched them, I was like, oh, oh my gosh, shit. you know, like, yeah. oh my gosh, imagine doing this, you know, and that every single time that I watch them, it just takes me to a world of pure beauty you know and and that's what that's what i'm passionate about i the rest of the things are just a distraction you know mm -hmm. people tell you you need to make more money and you need to live in a bigger house and you need to do this or that that at the end of the day that doesn't matter like when, whenever whenever you're gone like you're not gonna carry those things mm -hmm. you know but look at rebel without a cost you know james mm -hmm. dean is it's in everyone's eyes and heads 
forever you know yeah. and uh that's what i find so beautiful and that movie was like 70 years ago 70 something years that's ago crazy. and i still watch it and i'm like oh man like i i feel it you know i can live it that's crazy what about fight club oh man, man. like that movie the hype uh, the hype is real yeah yeah like <laughs> I didn't watch it for the longest time because everyone in film school in film school was always saying, "Oh, Fight Club, Fight Club, this and Fight Club that," and I yeah. was like, oh. "Yeah, yeah." And then one day I sat down and watched that movie, <laughs> yeah. and my brain was blown away. Yeah, I couldn't believe like what level of mastery of like putting a story together. Yeah, and everything, the acting, the writing, the music, the editing, the cinematography, everything, and you're like, "What am I?" watching like how does anyone can even like think of this in the first place and then through the whole movie you're going through this ups and downs of like you know what's happening and then you don't know what's happening and then you think you know what's happening yeah. but what you thought was happening was not the real thing that was happening yeah wow that's a good film yeah and they talk exactly what i was talking about which is like um what was the phrase it's like in order to uh I don't remember, but uh, it's like basically you gotta lose everything to start living, you know? And it's like, yeah, if you think about it, what do I exactly need to live, you know? And they just need air, you know? Like maybe food, Wa water, water. And, and that's, you know, that's almost about it. So, you know, um, it's just such a fascinating movie. Um, I've watched it so many times. I have it on DVD. I bought it like in four different ways. Um, and uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. it That's awesome. Mind. So tell me, what do you have coming up? Like, I know you were working on a, on a big project that you were excited about. Yeah. What can you tell us about what's coming with Javi? Yeah, so I have two movies coming out. Uh, one is for Hulu. Another one is coming in theaters first and then to some sort of platform, which I'm not sure yet. Mm -hmm. um, so in one of them, I'm playing a very, very dark character. Um, uh, which I am very excited about because it's a character that I've never played, not even not even close, and uh, it's very far away from me as well, uh, mm -hmm. from who I am as a person. The way we filmed it was very cool. Um, it's a psychological thriller, but we filmed it kind of like, I don't know, it gave me like euphoria vibes um, right. in a very artistic way, um, and... It was deep, man. Like, deep, deep, deep. I'm very excited for you guys to check out that character. Um, yeah. And then the other one, it's a... Uh, I don't know how much I can say. I gotta be careful. But yeah. uh, I played a U.S. Marine. Um, uh, I was in the Navy. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's very, very cool. I got to film with Eric Roberts, uh, which mm -hmm. is a legendary actor. He was nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. And see, it, the guy is amazing. Like I was having such a blast. I was, I was on set saying like, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm from Madrid, from Spain, and I'm filming right here with a nominated Oscar actor. Uh, yes. Like what's going on in my life? And uh, these are the types of things that you are like right there in the moment and you're having like an outer space kind of like yeah. seeing yourself like wait what is going on here right yes and uh i learned so much from him he was so funny i, I met bet. his wife as well uh she was super sweet as well and uh i'm very excited yeah that's called the frenzy yeah i'm really excited to watch that yeah. i really like his work yeah he's, he's one of those actors that you have seen him in everything. I feel and like everything. every single movie, yeah, yeah. he's there and like yeah. he's such a good uh, person. And I was so excited for you that you got to work with someone like that because yeah. you're still really young. Yeah. And then being able to work with someone, it's almost like you get to see where you're going to work towards like in the future and have a little bit of that now in the present. Yeah. So exactly. I'm. I'm. I always have this problem that. I am always thinking about the future. Like even when I book a project, like I'm always like working on the project, but at the same time, I'm like, all right, yeah, like after this, I'm gonna do this. And that my, my mind just never stops. And uh, this was a moment that I was like, let's stop for a second and let's enjoy this because this is mm -hmm. amazing, you know? And I was filming in like a, like a real World War II 
um, boat, massive, massive, massive boat. And um, when I got there on set, I was like, hold on. I thought we were like, you guys were recreating like some sort of like a boat, but I didn't know we were filming in the actual one. And we did. And it was, that was that was just incredible, you know? Awesome. Um, so yeah, especially because my grandpa was in the Navy as well. So yeah, it's great. That's really yeah, cool, yeah. man. That's the beauty of like what we get to do. And I know we got to enjoy it every single moment. It doesn't matter like how big a project gets or yeah whatever it is that you're doing if if you don't take a little time to enjoy it yeah whether it's small or whether it's big because like yeah. the moment of glamour and all that lasts so little time so little yeah like i remember when i finished my fur my second feature we rented a, a big theater and we had a premiere and i remember the moment that we were on the imax like theater and it was going through the imax projector and like we were having all these technical problems the red carpet was going on outside <laughs> everyone was like taking their pictures i'm trying to figure out like how to get the movie to play because it wouldn't like the dcp <laughs> had a problem and it wouldn't like play yeah the moment we got it to actually play and i saw the movie on like the big screen like that feeling was like there's nothing there's nothing like it like uh, this there's nothing like seeing how months sometimes even years of work turns into like a one hour and a half thing and it's so magical it's like an experience that i wouldn't change for anything you know and uh i love it but it's so funny that you were talking about the glamorous part of it because everybody from outside of the entertainment industry they think like all oh, actors are all about being glamorous and elegance and all of this when acting is the exact opposite it's like literally going through the dirt to find your emotions on like whenever you were you know feeling this way or this other way and then you're on set you're repeating so many times like the same scene and you gotta keep surprising yourself and um you know when you go to red carpets you're like wearing things that are like uncomfortable you're sweating you're like it's not what people think and um i don't know i found that funny when i was inside of that um area of the entertainment industry mm -hmm. i was like there's nothing glamorous about this nothing yeah. at all <laughs> what are some things that you you know for sure that people see you on social media and they might think something and then the reality of it is like completely different where are some maybe pre-assumptions that they might have about you that are just not true well i've actually gotten a lot of people that i've met that they're like oh i'm so surprised because i thought you were this way the number one thing that i get is i thought you were i don't know if i can say this on youtube but you can the, say whatever you want okay okay i thought you were an asshole i thought you were like uh this guy that went like you know i'm the best you know and like i'm like i'm the opposite like i think i'm i'm actually very I think I'm pretty down to earth. Like um, mm -hmm. I, I like having genuine conversations. So when like people see me or talk to me, they're like, um, like I, I never thought that you were this way, you know. And mm -hmm. I was like, that's interesting. I don't know why they would think that, but yeah, that's one of the things. The other, uh, the other thing is well about the height. <laughs> they think I'm short for some reason. No, you're pretty know. tall. Yeah. Well, you're t you're very tall. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you like it, check out this other episode right here. I'm sure you're going to like it. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one.